I am uh, Wayne Parrott, and I am a professor of biotechnology in the Department of Crop Science at the University of Georgia. And today, I am here at the University of Illinois to look at the Moro plots. These have been uh, in place since 1876, which uh, makes it one of the oldest uh, agricultural sustainability experiments that we have in the country. It turns out that in agriculture, we have been uh, concerned about sustainability since uh, really the 1800s. This is nothing new that was just invented by the environmental movement. Uh, in agriculture, we've re we realize that if you're not sustainable, there is no future. When uh, proper crop management techniques are used, yields uh, are sustainable over long periods of time. Okay, there is a right way and a wrong way to do things. And one of the contributions that biotechnology has made is it has made it a lot easier for farmers to crop the right way. Due to advances in biotechnology, uh, farmers say are plowing a lot less than they were. The worst thing you can do to soil is plow it. It washes away, uh, it loses its structure, and uh, in general it's, it uses a lot of fuel, fossil fuels, to plow it. With modern crops we're not plowing as much. The soil quality gets better. Uh, a lot of uh, other wildlife comes into play with insect resistant crops. We're not using uh, the uh, insecticide amounts that we used to use, which again uh, just makes for a healthier agroecosystem on the farm. In contrast uh, to the crop varieties that we has, have been uh, developing over the uh, past century, biotech varieties are subjected to a very uh, stringent uh, period of study before farmers are allowed to plant them. And uh, the idea is that by using biotech uh, problems, uh, crops, we want to solve problems. We don't want to be creating new problems. There is a whole series of uh, criteria now around the world. Anywhere where these are going to be planted have established their own criteria and that they will study for a few years to make sure there's nothing uh, different from conventional agriculture before the seed reached the farmer. During the uh, trial phases, before anything reaches market, re the environmental safety is done by a wide different range of groups uh, around the world. Certainly the, the companies themselves uh, do a lot of the own, of their own work, but they also, uh, there's many uh, universities uh, or colleges of agriculture, particularly uh, those with good extension departments that have done a lot of the work historically. And again, depending on what country you're in, it may be their Ministry of Agriculture or it may be, uh, you know, one of their institutes or one of their universities that carries out the safety research. You know, at this point, biotech crops have been grown for 14 years on over 2 billion acres in more than 29 countries around the world. So when we talk about their environmental safety, we do it from experience, uh, with the real world use, the real world information. We don't have to resort to uh, guesses and theories. Uh, and, but based on their large scale use and based on all the pre-market studies, our understanding of these crops is that they have not posed any problems that are different from conventional agriculture and in many cases have helped solve the problems of conventional agriculture. At the end of the day, an engineered corn plant is still a corn plant, an engineered soybean plant is still a soybean plant. And really the only difference between them and their non-engineered uh, plants is one gene. So they may be easier to plant or they may need less insecticides, but if uh, you didn't know that, I think most of us would never tell or could tell that they were bioengineered just by looking at them.